All right, hey everybody, welcome back to another Idea Center project video. Today we're going to be learning how to make these neat uh, 3D printed multicolor lithophanes. These are really neat. Um, today we're just going to be learning how to make the lithophane. But once you've done that, you can then add it to a box or put it in front of a light and you get a pretty neat result out of it that looks like this. So before we get started, we're going to want to make sure we have a couple things ready. Obviously, we want to make sure we have our printer available. So this is Bruce. This one has an MMU on top. And we're also going to want to grab our flash drive when we're ready. Um, this is printing right now, but before you start, you want to make sure it's not printing and just pull that out. We have five colors available. We have a white, a yellow, a dark blue, a pink, and a light blue. Um, these could be different in the future, but we're not going to be changing them uh, on our own. So if you need different colors, you're going to want to ask for help. And then we're going to want our laptop ready with Hueforge, the software we're going to be using for this project today as well as a photo in mind for what we want to make. This can be a piece of art like I have here. It can be a photo that you Google online, or it can even be just a funny photo from your phone. Anything is going to work, as long as it is a photo. So to get started, we're going to want to set up on the computer, and we are going to begin by downloading a photo we want to turn into a lithophane. So I am liking the way this one looks. I'm going to download it. And again, you can Google a photo, you can send one from your phone, but you got to get it on the computer. So now that I have mine, I'm going to go to Hueforge, our software. The logo looks like this down here in the bottom. And I'm going to import an image by going File, Open File, choosing Image, and then grabbing the photo that I just downloaded. We'll hit Open. And before we get started, I want to explain a couple things. This window is our preview. This is the photo that we're trying to convert, and this is what it's actually going to look like when we 3D print it. Um, up here, we have settings for size and layer height, which is going to be really important in a minute. Over here, we have the type of image that we're going to create. There's either filament painting or lithophane. And then down here, we have our filament sliders. This is going to set how many layers we have for each color. So to start, I'm going to want to set a size and the layer height. The layer height is already 0.08, so we're going to keep that. And our width and height, I want to set to be about 4 inches. So I don't know what 4 inches is in millimeters, so I'm just going to look it up. 101.6. I'll plug that in to Hueforge. And now I have this about the right size. So when we print this, it'll be about 4 inches square. A little bit smaller on one side, but that's okay. Now I want to come over here to our uh, lighting settings and change it to lithophane and it will automatically switch to backlit if it doesn't make sure you're selected on backlit and it looks really bad right now but this is going to set it so that it shows us an image of what it will look like when light shines through from the back now we can move down to our color sliders and here is where we're going to get to have a lot of fun so remember that we have our five filament colors um, whatever those are you're going to want to set them now and you do that by going right click set filament, and then choosing the color that you want. So I have white, then I have yellow, we have a dark blue, then a pink, and a light blue. Now, a couple things to understand. So. If you look right here, this is a representation of all the layers for our 3D print. Because remember, 3D prints are just made up of a lot of layers. So each layer, or not each layer, but every few layers, it's going to be a different color. And when you shine light through it, they combine, and that's how you get the image out of it. To set what layers, which color, all you have to do is slide these up and down. And I want you to think about it like this. So, Whatever one is at the top, it could be the pink, right now it's a 27, or I could make it the dark blue and make that 26. That is the highest layer. These are, this is the maximum number of layers on your print. So currently our design has 26 layers, and these other numbers show you how many layers of each color there are below that. So if I hit reorder, it'll put them in a nice ascending order of height. And to explain how this works, we have five layers of white going down first, and then not seven layers of pink, but two. 
So this is the total number of layers. So five, and then two more make seven. So two layers of pink, and then five layers of yellow to make 12. And hopefully this makes sense now. And that's how uh, this works. That's what the numbers mean. And all we're going to do is literally just play with these sliders until we get an image that we like. And I'm actually really liking that. I'm going to play with it a little bit more. And so I've played around with it a bit more now, and I think I'm really happy with the way this is looking. And so again, to recap, we have five layers of white plus four layers of pink to make nine, plus another four layers of yellow to make 13 total, plus seven layers of a light blue to make 20 layers all in total. So I'm very happy with my design. I know what colors and what layers we're working with. And now I'm going to hit File, Export STL. We're going to save the project as Norma Jean, my cat. And we're going to export this STL, Save. Do you want to replace it? Yes. OK, so now we have our STL, our 3D model of the design downloaded. And the next step is to open up Prusa Slicer. And then we're going to import that model, use our settings, and slice it. Make sure that you leave your HueForge window open, because we're going to want to look back at these numbers in a second. So back to Prusa Slicer, we're going to close this. I'm going to add our model. Let's wait for it to load. There it is. And once we have our model, I'm going to want to make sure we have a couple settings correct over here. First, we want to be on the Mark IV MMU3 0.4 nozzle printer. Our print setting is going to be 0.08 MMU Hue Forge. And then we're going to want to match our colors once again to the colors we have in real life. So we're going to start with white. That's our first color. Our second color is yellow. We're doing a dark blue for the third, pink for the fourth, and a light blue for the fifth. It's not important that these colors match exactly. They don't have to match perfectly, but they should be very close. So just do your best. And then now that we have all that in order, we also want to make sure supports are none. Infill is 100%, and then we're going to slice. So it takes a little while, but once it's done slicing, we will now have our model. And the next step is actually to set when and where we're changing our colors. So let's go back and look. This is going to be finished in just a second. Let's go look at our Hueforge settings. So we're going to start with white, and we're going to do that up to the fifth layer. And then we're going to change to pink. So I'm going to head back to Prusa Slicer, and I'm going to drag this slider bar, drag it all the way down to five. It says five right here on the side, so the fifth layer. And we're going to change to pink. Now we can look again, and we're doing pink all the way up to the ninth layer. And then we're changing to yellow. So pink all the way up to nine. Right click, change extruder, change to yellow. We'll drag this up again, and let's see where we need to go. All the way up to 13 yellow, and then we're changing to light blue. All the way up to 13, change to light blue. And then we'll bring it all the way up for the rest of the design. And that's perfect. We're blue from 13 to 20. That's exactly what we want. And now we're going to slice this one more time. All right, so now that our print is sliced, um, we are ready to put this on the 3D printer. So for the last steps, we're just going to want to grab our flash drive, plug it in, and start the print. <laughs> 